Susan. Yes. I have a puzzle for you today. I know you love puzzles, and this is it. You have seven geometric shapes, and your task okay. is to put those shapes together in the shape of a square. Okay. Now, we've been together a long time. I know. And you know I don't do very well with puzzles. I know, but I thought maybe today would be different. Probably not. Okay. But let me ask you this. What is this? It's called a tangram. Have okay. you ever played with tangrams? <sighs> Memory isn't what it used to be, uh, but probably at say? some point in time. Okay, so I'm still supposed to be putting this together. Please, right? Please. Okay. You know, all right. Chances are if I give Susan enough time, she'll probably get this tangram all put together. You know, a tangram really is a very, very ancient mm -hmm. puzzle. It's composed of two large triangles, mm -hmm. a mid-sized triangle, two small triangles, and then a square and a shape that we're not quite sure what it is. Um, Susan, any clue what that one is? Oh, that's a parallelogram. Oh, okay, why is it a parallelogram? Well, it has parallel lines on each side. Okay. Um, but notice, you know, it's not a rectangle. That's true. Because it doesn't have a 90 degree angle. But look at that, see, nice parallel. But well, I don't know where it fits. Wait, just, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. While Susan is trying to get there, I'm gonna just share a little bit with you about the story of tangrams. In fact, there was this young man who had a very priceless possession of his. It was a puzzle. And it was a beautiful porcelain puzzle. His name was Tan. And one day he was on the way to see the emperor and, oh, heaven forbid, this porcelain puzzle dropped to the ground and broke into many pieces. The pieces being what Susan's working on hey, right now. I got it. Fantastic. I got it. Okay. Well, unlike Tan, who legend has it, Tan never was able to put that puzzle back together. Oh, but if I remember something, and it's vague, but if I remember from long ago, he did create a lot of other puzzles. Yes, he did. He couldn't put it back into the square, but he created a lot of different things. Oh, I mean, some really neat shapes, and you see was that the some bird? of these. Yes, I mean, there's and a the boat? lot. And the boat. Okay. Now, I won't promise you I could put together those, but there were lots of different things. So when we look at this puzzle that you gave me. You did very well. I guess I could do a lot of other things with it. So where can I go and what's this got to do with math? Well, first of all, it's visualization. Okay. You were able to visualize and analyze how those pieces went together okay. into a whole. Well, any time I talk about a whole, it leads me to think of something called percentages. We always talk about percentages being part of a whole. Okay, so I could say that my two large triangles would represent 50%. Oh, 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 but it would also represent half. Yes. So now I'm doing frac. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Because those would be one of the two parts you need to form the whole. Okay, so if I were to take another one of these, well, but see Bonnie, that doesn't fit right. I, that doesn't tell me anything. No, it really doesn't, but you know what? Just like in all other types of math, sometimes you don't get the correct answer first. So oh, but this one does. Yes, you did. Okay. What'd you discover? I discovered that I could take two triangles, put them together, and that they would actually fit inside a square. Oh. I think that's a major concept. Oh. Yes, it is. And you discovered it using a very ancient puzzle called a tangram. Okay. Okay. So, all right, granted, I'll give you that much. So we've done a little bit here with percents. We've played a uh, little bit with fractions. You've understood concepts of basic spatial shapes. Okay. Now, what else can you do? Could I take, okay, let me think. If I take the whole. Yes. 
and I give it a value. Say this, I've given this a value of $10. Oh, we all like money. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, but that's also our decimals. Students, but that's decimals understand. as well. Yes. Okay, so I've hit fractions, decimals, and percent. So now I could actually, with a little bit of time, I could determine the value of each one of these pieces based on what I've learned using a tangram. So I could assign a value now, I have to do it carefully, but I could get a value for each one of those pieces. Definitely. How much would you pay for each piece if the total cost of the tangram was $10? And I can start fairly easily because I know that those two pieces represent half of the entire part. So each one of these, well, the whole thing would be $5. So now each one of them becomes $2.50. So using something as simple as a tangram, which sometimes can be more complex than simple, I can teach a number of different strategies. And I have to admit that this is a lot more fun than if I just did a worksheet. Plus, for your students who are hands-on learners, not only was Susan visualizing, she had a kinesthetic and an auditory experience, all ways that we know are wonderful for students to use. Interest in some ideas on tangrams? You can get more at floridatechnet.org. So, where are we going to go, Susan? We're going to go to floridatechnet.org. We're going to access all of the different activities that are here but in addition to that, you're also going to have a chance to access other ones because there are lesson plans that are already out there on the web. All you got to do is find them. So if you go to floridatechnet.org, you can locate all of these different materials. So have fun. Go engage your students. It'll make a world of difference in how they begin to be more conceptual understanders when it comes to math.